Hello everyone, Triple S back here with some more dysfunctional systems, episode of World Learning to Manage Chaos, reminder Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube chat, essential links are in the description, the outro please does out, not gonna please have a like. So last time, uh, Winter got home and threw up a lot and then did other things a lot into the toilet. Then she went into bed, talked to her roommate, Waverly or Waverly, how you pronounce it, then she went to sleep, then there was the ending credits. Now this is this after credits stuff, and like I said, I don't know if this is like a preview episode 2. Like it's going to be an episode two, or it's just an after credits thing, and it's not going to be an episode two. But whatever, let's carry on. This is so bleeding awkward. I know that taking care of Winter is my responsibility, but well, I can't. It's past twelve o'clock. I still haven't gotten brazen enough to wake her. I managed to drop the ball with the simplest task: make sure she eats breakfast. She just came back so depressed yesterday. I've no idea how to strike up a conversation with her now. Double dot. I want to cheer her up, obviously, but I just... Okay, first of all, I don't even know her, know her that well. We've only been living together for a few weeks. Sure, we've been friendly, but, you know, I wouldn't say we're friends yet. Still, as a roommate, I feel like I should at least try to make her feel better. Man, maybe that would make uh, me seem... What? Make it seem like an asshole? Like, oh, don't sweat the small stuff, Winter. It's just one world lost, and there's plenty of those. It's a fantastic situation we have here. In the room, whatever number it is. I'm totally not equipped to understand how she's feeling. I'm not qualified to pester her. I'm not even it. I'm not able to even get what happened to her. How does all of the world's air just burn away? With a demon summoning and a demon summoning and a crazy undone seal. Curses and abominations from distant space? <laughs> That'd be worth seeing. Hmm. Someone at the door? Maybe this will force me into action. I walk over, prepared to answer. It's the northerner. Pretty as usual and handsome all the same, crossing his arms and putting on a serious face. He dresses me. Waverly, yo. I mirror his pose. Hey yo, yo. Her views on the mend came to give her a hug. That's great, but I'm not letting you in. He stutters in puffy disbelief, as if what I just said was the most preposterous thing. Hmm, why not? I think you might want that hug more than her. Ridiculous. He draws out a slow fake punch. I must make it past you. Therefore, I challenge you to a duel, Waverly, and the reward will be a 10 second hug for Bew. Uh, is that Bew? I don't know. Bring up my own arm in the same mock attack. Oh, getting it from her or giving it to her? Oh, I'd give it to her. But I need longer than 10 seconds. Extending a finger from my fist, I point at him. No. Stop right there. His lips tremble for a few seconds, but he prevents a smile. Winner hugs Bew, agreed? Fine, but you will lose this game. He rolls up his sleeve and offers me his hand. Thumb war? Let's dance the dance of combat. Linking hands, we both raise our thumbs and stare intently at the battle zone. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. We pass our thumbs over one another as we speak the rhyme, and when we finish, we clash. We should go for a few seconds before Io speaks. This is so dumb. I think it was a good way of getting the point across. Weird otherworldly kids game where two, oppose two opposing forces battle to the death. A great metaphor for the philosophy of some systems. Sure, sure, but something's wrong here. If I had this much fun fighting in a war, I'd be worried about myself. Ha, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say the stakes are quite as high here. Do you think they'll give us more rhymes for other concepts? If you see a loaded gun, you, you had better fucking run. People, people, people hate. It's what they call discriminate. He laughs and our thumb game continues. Playfully, neither of us tries very hard. So, you heard about Winter? Yeah, me and the other idiots who accepted the title of Promising were called to an emergency meeting last night. It was like at two in the morning. 
looks up at me. Cyrus showed up. I also look up. Really? So what happened? You don't know? I look back at our thumbs. I only sort of know. Ugh. Cyrus killed the country's leader, and that leader ordered something called a nuke to be launched at another country after his death. The thing could basically wipe out a city. I whistle. Ah, and the nuke, you see, it's short for nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon. N nuclear. Nuclear. He says this quite heartily. Oh my, the education you folks receive dazzles me. Please do try to keep your language simple so that I may understand. I can feel him smile at this, and he replies jokingly. Sorry, sorry, I'll try. So how this thing that could wipe out the city wipe out a whole planet's population? Well, you see, there's actually one, only one special type strong enough to do that. I'll admit, I didn't know about it. The true fusion bomb. A bomb that makes stars when it blows up. I think. I don't know. I'm kind of talking out of my ass. Physically, star on planet equals bad. It killed everyone. Huh. What did Cyrus have to say about all this? Nothing. He just stood there while the other mediators expressed the situation and told us we should be paragons for our peers. Like we're supposed to be the mature about it, and not joke about it. Which is pretty damn presumptuous if you ask me. No one's going to be a dick about it. Hmm. I guess some kids aren't going to understand how serious this is though. A world just committing suicide with a weapon we've never even heard of is almost completely insane. If you told me about it before the teachers did, I'd call bullshit. Hmm. Anyway, let's finish this. I'm getting tired of holding you. Oh really? I can't hold your hand anymore? Maneuvering my thumb with what I'd call some really impressive dexterity, I pin him down for the count. No! In a few seconds, we disengage. Ah, damn it! He scars and lightly massages his thumb. Well, it's your win. But I've won the warmth of your hand in the palm of my own. Oh, fairest Waverly, I will cherish it forever. Shut up. Has Bew been asleep this whole time? How long has she been out? Out like a light for something like 14 hours? He whistles long. Well, I suppose not all humans are as durable as me. Yes, we are not all northern strong. He beams and points at me with both hands. Yes, you said it. Closing his eyes, he puffs out his chest and puts his hand on his hips. We're born and bred badasses, made tough by tundra and snowdrift, don't you forget it. Never, comrade. But, yeah, I can't let you into hugger. Not with those powerful arms. Standing and eat. Standing at, ease, standing at ease, he answers me smoothly. I'd be soft about it, ma'am. I make sure she'd get more of it out of it than me. Hey, watch yourself. Smiles. Touchy lass. Hey, it's fine if I can't. I'll... Hey, but... I love you dearly, and I'd love to comfort her. But I understand if the little tyke needs some rest after all that went down. Yeah, she probably does. Casol, Casol, Waverly? Don't tell me you haven't even checked on her. I turn my eyes away. Well, what does he expect? Am I meant to just shake her awake and ask how you're feeling? Didn't even make sure she doesn't have a fever. Waverly. Oh, right. Not a bad idea, that. I will throw you out of there if you won't be responsible enough to take care of her. You make it sound so easy. You barely know one another. Then get to, and it will be easy. Uh, I kind of despise this guy for his other positive attitude. Easier said than done means nothing to him. You going to leave or do I have to shut this thing in your face? I he quickly shakes his head and holds up his hands. Whoa, girl, this face is priceless. Don't damage it. You see things like that, and I only want to do it more. He plays it flinching and backs away. I'm out, I'm out. Just say hello to Bew for me. I tell her that I hope she feels better soon. Fine, girly. He sucks his teeth and cuts his eyes at me, pouncing afterward. Later, Waverly. Later. As he walks off, I move to close the door. If I'm able to, though, I owe calls for me again. Are you going to use that hug you won? Uh, of course not. Laughing, he turns down another hallway. Da -da -da.
close the door and rest my back against it. Lastly, I sigh. I was right. I should at least check if she has a fever. Hmm. Can't tell if she's in comfort or not, but she's very asleep judging by that dark stain on her pillowcase. Alright. It will be embarrassing for her to wake up with me standing here, so I'll just touch her forehead softly and quick. I hate the sound of my lamp to get dark in my bedroom. Da -da -da. No fever, I think. Da -da -da. I brush away some of her hair. She was sweating quite a bit, looks like, although now she's almost a little cold. Well, I had better wake her up now. I lightly poke her cheek, which garners no response. Ka. Don't make this out for me, eh? You cute little thing. Fine. I slightly pinch her cheek, and when she doesn't budge, I start to tug. Once I do that, she twitches, and understand it as a signal to retreat from her bedside. Moving swiftly, I return to my desk and pick up my book so that I can pretend I was reading. I mean, I was reading around 20 minutes ago, but... Ah, she's gotten up. Yeah, well, what time's it? Well, look who's decided to wake up. Late. You've been sleeping since 10 last night. Whoa, I actually feel like I've been sleeping. The sentence transforms into a mumbled mess and she begins to nod. Come on, Winter. You were doing so well. You still need to eat breakfast. I clicked. Oh, uh, well, lunch at this point. My bad. Breakfast? She drops back to her bed. Back down to her bed. I can feel her gaze at my back. Sorry, I slept past it, didn't I? Oh man, don't apologise to me. I could have easily woken you up. But, well, yeah, it's lunch now, which is what I meant to say. Anyway, what? Over oh, there. When do you want to go eat? Right now? I'll help. Oh, I'm honestly too ugh, feeling to actually get up, let alone stand up or walk. Or eat. I... I see. Dot dot dot. How are you, Beverly? Fine, you... Blech, Beverly. Please pay attention. Well, your mind seems alright. Oh, trust me, it's not. It feels so slow. But you're practically quick just now. Good stuff. Yeah. I hear her turn over. Don't tell me you're just going to go back to sleep. No. Then what are you doing getting so comfy? Am I not allowed confident in my own room? You going to fall asleep? No, I won't. Yeah, that response was measure slower. I don't think you're telling the truth. I will, wavily. Oh, maybe I should read you some lines out of this book. That'll keep your attention. Ravelly, please. Don't. I turn to an old page. <clears throat> Eleanor pressed her silver tipped finger against his skin and hissed a single question. Winter grows loudly. Gro grows? Groans. She doesn't grow. Groans loudly and mumbles something I can't hear. Did you see Asta walking along the parapets, or didn't you? Martin's breath was still, and he turned his eyes from hers. Thoughts of his demon lover were still fresh in his mind. Asta's breath. Asta's taste. Asta's touch. Ah, her touch. Whether his heart had been courted or commanded, it mattered not. He felt for Asta, enough that he could never betray her. I hear Winter turn over again. Spare me. He's about to sleep with Eleanor, though, despite all this crap about Asta. Thought you want to know how that plays out? No. She coughs. No, please stop. So, what are you reading? Why are you reading that tripe? You read inward. F you read inward fantasy fiction, and you belittle my taste. I like reading inward fantasy because it's fun. So, hmm. <laughs> These books are fun too, but fun because they're terrible. You see, Winter, I enjoy these works because I can appreciate the silliness. I don't think they're actually good. Then you think they're awful, and revel in that? Yep, authors from our world are all very good at what they do, naturally, so it's nice to read some trashy nonsense for a change. 
You're making fun of other worlds. Yeah, who cares? I don't know. That's right. Ah. Uh, I might be handling this with the sensitivity of a jackhammer. Um, not that. Uh. Oh man, what am I supposed to say? Not that I mean to imply. Waverly, it's fine. I don't mean to sound like that bothers me. Sorry. Ha, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Da da da. Da da da. Winter. Winter Harrison's place. Oh, come on, you're kidding. We'll, we'll pick this up in a bit. I rise from my seat. Coming! I walk over to the door, hoping that this will be over quickly so that I can return and clear the air. Opening it, I'm a bit taken aback to find a teacher and my first mentor. Henry Penn and Walter L. Why are they together? Come to think of it, have they always worn close to alike? They're looking like perfect, fashionable gentlemen. Are you quite alright, Waverly? Oh. Y yes Hello, sirs. Can I help you? Waverly. How oh, nice to see you again. I hope you've been well. I raise my shoulders a little, because I'm not sure how to answer. Oh, Walter, this student was your protege? Walter nods happily. Was the first, I believe, and I'm sure it was an honour. An honour? Yeah. I covered my mouth, having spoken what I was thinking. I am really in a mess today. Haha, <laughs> she kids. A regular miniature me. Whoa, I hope not. I see. How rude of me. My apologies. Mistress Ayer, I did not greet you. Waverly Ayer, 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 He gives a halfway bow. Greetings. How are you doing today? Decent. I blink once and hurry out and honorific. Uh, sir. That is good to hear. Can I help you? My roommate is sick and I was taking care of her, so... Please cut me loose already. Oh, of course. Might you give Mistress Harrison this letter and tell her to expect a meeting with me sometime later? I take the envelope that he offers me, not bothering to look it over. Went to Harrison, eh? That poor girl, what is the end of a world? Correct. And what's worse, she witnessed Cyrus mediating. Walter? It sounds like he was 200% Cyrus yesterday. Out and out stupid. Walter smiles toothfully and looks me in the eye, which is weird, but Walter behaviour. It's hard not to laugh at his flippant, foolish actions. I only don't because, unlike him, I am solemn about these matters. But Cyrus, he has truly exceeded the limits of being an ass. He is in fact such a large ass that he puts the centre lance to shame. And, ah, what's this? Walter and Henry look to the right, my right, and they peek past the door here to see what's drawn their attention. Speak of the devil, and he doth appear, Mr. Cyrus Addington. Walter speaks like he's presenting a circus act, complete with showy hand motions and everything. He's right, there's Cyrus, looking a little paler than normal. Librarians, librarians, I see that you're still attached to Penn's hip. That's a nice joke, Cyrus. You've always been good at jokes. Though I suppose that's no surprise, seeing as you're grand joke all of your own. At the colour of my eye, I can see Walter sneering. I haven't had the opportunity to ask, are you properly ashamed of yourself or am I to take your overbearing silence recently to be your standard brooding and angst? I'm not here to mince words with you, Walter. It's the pen. Are you finished here? If so, then I ask that you leave while I speak with my protégé. Henry, who hadn't bothered to say anything between these two, speaks up. As a matter of fact, my business is done. I should let you know, though, Cyrus, that your protégé is still infirm. He nods politely at me, indicating to Cyrus my presence. We are instead speaking to the young Mistress Ayrere. She will do. Eh? In that case, Waverly, we will be departing now. Henry puts his hand on my shoulder and bends to whisper at my ear. You know where to find me if you need me, I hope. I understand if recent events have been difficult for you to comprehend. I nod, giving my shoulder a rub as he lets me go and stands up straight. <coughs> Pardon me. Alright, Walter, quit. Quit sticking your tongue out at him. You're being childish. 
Come now, we're leaving. Right, right. Goodbye, Waverly. Yes, goodbye, Waverly. Henry and Walter walk towards Cyrus, and while the elder Midgetta continues past him, the younger stops at Cyrus's side. Da -da -da. I strain my ears to listen. I really am fucking disappointed in you. I don't know what you're thinking, but you need to take this job seriously. You asked to be a mentor, now start acting like one. You're not working alone anymore. After this, Cyrus answers, but I can't hear what he says. Walter grabs him by the shoulder and smiles, whispering something else. Cyrus refuses to look at him, and Walter scoffs, shoving Cyrus out of his way and catching up with Henry. Leaving Cyrus to just stand there with his head down. Man, they're so weird. Adults are so weird. Ugh. After a few moments of nothing, he walks over to the door, his gaze still fixed to the ground. Hello, Waverly. Hey. You awkward, creepy bastard. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not. He finally looks me in the eyes. I'm not entirely sure what to say. You and me both. I just know that I haven't properly apologised. Not that this is properly apologising, having a student relay the message for me. It's immature, but I imagine I can't talk to Winter herself right now. I say nothing because there's nothing polite to say. I want you to tell Winter that I'm sorry. I want you to tell her that absolutely nothing that happened was her fault. I suppose that's all I want to say that can pass for you. The blame is wholly mine, and I want, to know, want her to know that. She did nothing wrong. You can see that he wants to explain himself more, but it's hurting him to try. I'd uh, better speak up. Sir, I'll tell her. Dot, dot, dot. Can I ask you something, sir? I heard you killed a leader and that something bad happened because of that. Wasn't that a, well, a dumb idea? Did you think that wouldn't happen? Cyrus doesn't answer for long enough that I think he's not going to answer. But he speaks before I can say never mind. I... Listen, this is something difficult for students such as yourself to understand, but... I knew full well it, could, it would happen. What? Listen. Why on earth should I? It's something that you eventually must understand. The situation was a quagmire. Many of the options available to us could have very likely made things turn out worse rather than better. You'll have to believe me that in this case, the best course of action to, to promote order was to allow that something bad to happen. Ugh. I'll have to hear what Winter says because that sounds like nonsense. The larger issue was that I underestimated the consequences. To put it bluntly, I did not properly research. I was overconfident. Soul, that is, the system we had visited, was a very chaotic world, although inconsistently. Scientific discovery happened both quickly and suddenly there. Large leaps in technological prowess were spurred by random discovery. It was a very unusual system. And I knew that, but I didn't give it proper consideration. I had expected, I had, I had expected some losses from my actions, but certainly not the loss of the entire world. In short, I misjudged and rushed things. You know how I rush things. Don't smile at me, you fiend. You can't just tell me you allowed a world to die and expect me to smile back. Yeah, I know you're calling on those rumours about yourself being a grimly logical murder happy bastard, but it's not really funny knowing it's true and what it entails. Dot dot dot. Well, unless you have any more questions... What did Walter mean when he said you asked to be a mentor? What am I doing? Rather you git. Where do you think... Where? Where do you get off to talking like a power with a superior and asking such special questions? You weren't even supposed to hear that. Evans, are you a buffoon? Far more than he knew when he said it. Huh? However, I don't think that's a matter to discuss with you kids. Sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. Is that all? Uh, yeah. Then thank you for listening to me, Waverly. Again, I'm sorry to put this responsibility onto you, but I would really appreciate appreciate it if you could uh, do this for me. 
I will. I will. Don't worry. He juggles. It certainly opened up a lot more, Waverly. This... <laughs> this is making it seem like I made a fine decision to become a mentor. I get to watch you guys grow up. I may have forgotten what it means to grow up. Da -da -da. By the way, you shouldn't eavesdrop. Considering it, I decide to smile. Don't talk about private, ma private matters in public then, sir. Ha, I'll try not to. Then I'll be leaving, Waverly. Peace to you. I answer you. He nods to me and walks away. Shut the door. I'm not sure what my opinion of... <coughs> oh, shit. I'm not sure what my opinion of Cyrus is now. Maybe it's worse. I shouldn't think it's any better, but... Well, I guess he... Ugh, this is something I can't... This isn't something I can work out right now. Yo, Winter. What? You're very popular today. You've had a total of three visitors come for you. What was it technically before? Ah, whatever. What can I say? I'm very charming. Well, Mistress Charming, I have a letter for you. I walk up to her bedside to hand over the thing. Before I do, though, I decide I should have a look at what the envelope says. For, real, for whenever it's too much to bear, read this, Henry Penn. Huh. Well, here you are. I toss it down next to her pillow when she reads it sideways. From Mr. Penn. Hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. Yep, and um, also, I'm sorry about kind of talking dismissively about worlds. I told you that I didn't really mind. I'm still sorry. I don't really... I shouldn't have been talking that way anyway. You really don't need to apologise, Waverly. Cyrus is also sorry. Winterfall silence. Hey, come on, just listen to what I had to say. I'm listening. He's sorry, and I want you to know that it's not your fault. It's his. He doesn't want you to blame yourself. He knows he fucks up, Winter. Even if he's a jerk, you should forgive him. For yourself. It's not that simple, Waverly. You didn't hear him yesterday. He most certainly does not feel bad about what he did. He just may feel bad about letting me see it. Dot, dot, dot. I mean, even if I wasn't concerned with his motivations, he still treated me awfully and made me watch him kill a person. Furthermore, even if he had succeeded, millions still would have died. Part of my language, but screw Cyrus Addington. A dark feeling grows in my belly. I push it down. Nothing good comes from harbouring bad will. I can't pretend to. I can't pretend I know what that's like, Winter. But I know that just feeling shit about things isn't going to help you. I swallow. And I hate to say it, but you're probably going to see a lot more of people killing people in this line of work. We also both know that we may end up killing a few of several ourselves, but nobody wants to acknowledge that. Dot a dot. I let out a sigh. This is depressing talk. It's best if we move on. Well, whatever then, whatever. I think we've delayed you eating for long enough. Any longer and you could end up missing your debriefing. Ah, shoot. You're right. That's today. I completely forgot about it. Yep, yeah, so come on. I reach down and she lifts herself up to receive me. She holds onto my arms with a trembling lack of strength. Alright, that's it. I ease her out of bed as carefully as I can. And she's soon on her feet. You able to stand alright? Able to stand. Not quite alright. Well, that's clear from how she's swaying a little. Don't try to do this on your own then, Winter. You've got my shoulder right here. Yes, thank you. She presses all of her negligible weight onto me. I stand firm. We walk to the door, prepared to leave. Prepared to go on, I should think. Fade black. And, oh, name this profile, um, Winter 1, save profile, I guess. Okay, so there we go. There we go indeed. That was 
The Tomorrow Systems episode 1 went into Manage Chaos, where we followed Cyrus's instructions on killing the person. Next time, we should be able to load back here. With this one. It's the choices. There we go. Last time we did follow Cyrus. Next time, I am going to rebel and convince him to not kill the leader. Hopefully convince him. I think you can fail it, but there's also multiple chances of convincing him. So yeah, that was the Follow Cyrus finale. Thank you for watching. Reminder to it, so on YouTube chat extension links are in the description and outro. Please check us out. Like the piece of a like. So next time, like I said, we're going to rebel and we'll see how things differ in that ending compared to this one. So thank you for watching. Uh, see you all next time. Goodbye.